Welcome back to the Learn Medical Spanish podcast and YouTube channel. In this episode, I'll go over part two of an anatomy overview. So I did part one in the last episode, and so we're going to pick up where we left off. The last term in the last episode was elbow, and so we're going to be going on from there with the rest of the upper extremity and then doing the lower extremity and then a few other general terms. So in case you aren't aware, a lot of these phrases and a bunch of other anatomy phrases and dialogues and things for emergency room complaints are in a CME course that's also available. You can find a link in the episode description. So let's go ahead and get into it, though. So first I'll say the, uh, the terms, the phrases, or whatever they are in English, and then I'll pause and then say them in Spanish. So when I pause, spend some time thinking about how to say it in Spanish, see if you can figure it out even before I say it. Then I'll say it in Spanish two times total so that you have a chance to repeat it a couple times. Here's the first word, wrist. And it's always going to be the wrist or the whatever, so always include the word the. So the wrist. La muñeca. La muñeca. For bonus points, what else does muñeca mean? So this is this is random, but muñeca is the word for doll as well. So for some reason, the word for wrist and the word for doll are the same. Kind of weird, huh? But anyway, la muñeca means the wrist. How about the hand? La mano. La mano. So if you just look at the word mano, you might assume it's masculine, but it is in fact feminine. It's one of those rare exceptions where it ends in an O, but it's a feminine word, so you say la mano instead of el mano. Finger. El dedo. El dedo. So dedo actually is the same word for finger or toe. So you can think of it like meaning a digit. So it's like saying the digit. The next one is nail, as in fingernail or toenail. La uña. La uña. How would you make that plural? You would say las uñas. How about thumb? El pulgar. El pulgar. So this one's always a little tricky for me to remember just because it's similar to the word for inch, <laughs> which is pulgada, but pulgar means thumb and pulgada means inch. So I don't know if it's helpful or not helpful to, to know both of those at the same time. Next word, leg. La pierna. La pierna. Hip. La cadera. La cadera. Thigh. El muslo. El muslo. Knee. La rodilla. La rodilla. Ankle. 
ankle, or of course, the ankle. El tobillo. El tobillo. Foot. El pie. El pie. Toe. And so you already learned this because it's the same word as finger. Finger and toe both sound kind of like digit. El dedo del pie. So if you want to clarify, you'd say dedo del pie. So a digit of the foot <laughs> means a toe. El dedo del pie. Now some more general terms since we got to the bottom of the body. So how about the word for muscle? El músculo. El músculo. Tendon. El tendón. El tendón. Bone. El hueso. El hueso. Joint. La coyuntura. La coyuntura. Ligament. And this one sounds really similar in English and Spanish. Ligament. El ligamento. El ligamento. So, of course, you can use those general terms like muscle, joint, etc. if you're just kind of saying, well, maybe this, this body part is damaged or maybe this body part is where the problem is or something like that. All right, continuing. Artery. La arteria. La arteria. Vein. La vena. La vena. Nerve. El nervio. El nervio. Blood. La sangre. La sangre. So that concludes the uh, vocabulary. So with all the phrases I shared, or words I shared in this part and the previous episode, it's pretty much enough to get through a trauma exam and then explanations about, you know, what's damaged or this or that. If you're talking about, you know, a broken bone or a muscle contusion or, or whatever it is after an injury. But if you want to see these phrases on my website, there's a link in the episode description or the video description. If you're on the podcast, you can find it on YouTube as well. There's a link to that. And if you'd like to learn some similar types of anatomical terms along with various dialogues related to common chief complaints in the ER, I also have that CME course that you can find a link to and get more information about that as well. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time on Learn Medical Spanish.